Hey, Professor Gary Bailey here. Uh, after paying some attention to the internet and looking at some of the bike setup videos that have been presented, um, and many of you seem to think that those are ads for companies, which they w may well be, um, I wanted to go a little bit deeper with it and talk about bars, talk about bends and rise of bars, whether you're a tall rider or a short rider, which ones you should use and why. Um, seats and seat heights, things to look for there. If you're a taller rider, you may want to remove a taller seat. Uh, foot pegs, uh, definitely foot pegs uh, need to be changed sometimes. Sometimes for wider, sometimes for more grip for your feet, uh, sometimes to lower them, and sometimes to bring them back a little. I'm um, also going to talk about tires and tire pressure and try and give you a little bit more insight on bike setup. Uh, some pretty basic, simple things, but a little more information than just trying to sell a product. I uh, hope you enjoy this, and uh, let's get down to talking about some of the particular things that maybe you need to know. Well, let's first of all start with the bars. Um, I think the bars are probably one of the most important things for everybody to have the bar that they like and have the feel that they like and because they give you the control that you want over the motorcycle. Uh, first thing I can tell you is, uh, and this is not an ad, uh, but I know a little bit about Pro Tapler bars and who runs the bars. Um, I always like the Ricky Carmichael bin. I like the Carmichael bin. Uh, because it has a 56 millimeter uh, sweep to it. Uh, somebody like Travis, he likes them a little bit straighter. He actually likes to go with a 55 millimeter sweep, where Kevin Wyndham likes a 54 millimeter sweep. Uh, so it's kind of like what you prefer. Uh, as far as the height of the bar goes, um, height of the bar, uh, different riders like different uh, heights. For instance, the RC bar uh, happens to be a 40 millimeter rise. Uh, where, uh, let's talk about James Stewart just a minute. James Stewart uses a 56 millimeter rise and James Stewart uses a 52 millimeter sweep on his bars. So it's kind of a rider preference and it has to do with the, the, the triple clamps and how they set and the, the seat height and that determines a little bit why one bike may use a considerably taller bar more so than another one does, but the sweep kind of stays pretty much in that 52, 56 millimeter sweep range. It's kind of what each rider likes and what you feel the most comfortable with. Um, as far as bars width goes, uh, I kind of like cutting the bars down a little bit. Most of them are about around 32 inches. Uh, I like cutting a quarter inch off of the end. A smaller rider may want to cut a half inch off each side. And the reason you want to cut a half inch off each side or a quarter inch off each side is to help you with your hand grip to get your arms turned out a little bit more and use what I call a tennis grip so that you have a little bit better grip on the bars so that when you turn the throttle it becomes more of a twist like opening up a doorknob. Um, as far as the levers go, um, there are different levers. Um, different companies make different levers, but I do like the, the levers that actually move, they bend. Uh, whenever you fall down, uh, instead of them bending or breaking, uh, they actually move out of the way, they're spring-loaded, um, I think it's a very good idea. Uh, as far as how you adjust your levers, up, down, straight out, whatever, uh, most riders today prefer them a little more straight out to slightly down. That varies from rider to rider, it depends on the height of the rider, it just depends on, what, again, what they feel the most comfortable with. Um, I like them where they're down just a little bit, um, probably about a 30 degree angle, a little bit more like what your arms are whenever you're riding the motorcycle because uh, I feel like that puts you in a little better position and it keeps any cramping out of your wrist and any serious bend out of the wrist, which to me is less chance of a wrist injury. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is tires, tire pressure. Uh, there's many different manufacturers out there of tires. Um, so um, hard pack track, um, loamy track. Uh, I, I would go to the manufacturer and look at their specs as far as what tire. As far as air pressure goes, generally 12, 13 pounds is what most riders run uh, on air pressure. Uh, again, that depends a little bit on the track. Uh, maybe 15 pounds of air pressure if the track has a lot of rocks, uh, a lot of square edge bumps, uh, less chance of a flat tire. Uh, so those are some suggestions as far as uh, air pressures go. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is seat. Uh, a taller rider may want a little bit taller seat. Taller seat uh, would possibly... Uh, be a half inch to an inch taller, depending on how tall you are. Um, it makes the transition from stand up to sit down a whole lot easier. Um, and it makes the seat much flatter, so it helps and makes it easier for you to stay up on the front of the bike. Um, the next thing would be foot pegs. 
foot pegs, changing foot pegs from stock uh, because the, the, the pegs are a little bit more aggressive as far as the bite that they have and the grip that they have because they're much more sh pointed and sharp. Um, a lot of them are also wider and I think wider is, is very important to have a better platform to stand on. Um, I actually helped IMS, not another ad, um, <laughs> develop a peg that is down a half inch and back a half inch. And the reason for that was because, again, because of my height for the down, but I also like to move the pegs back just a little bit to put the weight a little bit more toward the rear end of the motorcycle. Um, that kind of is in, on the same theory as riding on the balls of your feet uh, for more control to be able to absorb the motorcycle. It's easier to weight the motorcycle in the corner on the balls of your feet. Uh, it's easier to ride through the whoops, less impact on your suspension. Uh, and also helps the landing over a jump if you're on the balls of your feet as opposed to in your arches. Uh, the next thing would be the brake pedal. Running the brake pedal uh, just slightly above the foot peg uh, I think is a good idea rather than having it low where it could get caught in the ruts, uh, you get your toe caught in the ground. It also allows you to keep your knees and your form a little bit better entering a corner where if it's too low it makes you squat a little bit more and throws your weight a little bit more onto the front end of the motorcycle when you possibly want to have it back. Uh, lastly would be the gear lever. Uh, the gear lever run it slightly above the uh, foot peg so that it's easier for the upshift and it's easier for the downshift um, and um, more for comfort and you need to be able to get your boot underneath it and you need to have a good downshift so that's a downshift so that's a nice comfortable position to have the gear in to be able to accomplish both of those. I uh, hope these things have helped you. Um, again, if I mentioned any names of products, uh, it's not for any reason other than uh, giving you a little guidance. So I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope it answers some of your questions and uh, look forward to doing another one of these soon uh, on some riding techniques.